It was a beautiful Easter morning on the island of Sodor, and all the engines are... asleep. Hey, make with the waking up already! Why does the narrator always have to wake us up every morning? Because, Henry, he wants us to get to work. Well, it may be fine for you, Emily, but not for me. I need my beauty sleep. We all do, Henry, but we have to get to work. I wonder if there's even an express for me today. I think that was for someone else, Golden. Just then, Toby arrived with Annie and Clarabelle. Hi, Toby! Hi! <gasps> Annie? Clarabelle? What are you doing with my coaches? I'm just borrowing them while Henrietta is at the works. What does Henrietta need? Well, she is having a repaint. Just then, Sir Tom Hatt stepped out of the coaches. He had important news. Good morning, engines. The local school is having an egg hunt and picnic, but they are out of candy. So a new shipment of candy has arrived to the docks, waiting for someone to pick it up. James, I'd like you to take the candy special to the school. Oh, yes, sir! And James soon puffed out of the sheds to collect his trucks. At work, I'd like you to pick up the children. Yes, sir! Gordon and Henry, I'd like you to pick up the eggs from Farmer McCall and some paint from Knapford. Yes, Fine, sir. sir! And lastly, Thomas and Percy, I would like you to collect the tables and chairs for the picnic. All, All right, right, sir! After Sir Tom Hatt gave out the work orders, he hurried back to his office. When James arrived at the docks, he was both drowned and excited by the smell of candy from the mainland. James watched as crates of candy were loaded into a truck. Once all the crates were loaded into his trucks, James switched tracks and was coupled up. Now, James, those cars are really heavy, so you should have a back engine. I'll be fine. And besides, what's the worst that could happen? Don't tell me you just said... Oh, you bet I did. <coughs> and James then puffed away with his long line of trucks. Well, shiver me pistons. On the way, James met Rosie. Hi, James. That train looks a little heavy. Would you like some help? No, thank you. I don't need dumb little tank engines to help me out. Rosie felt hurt. Meanwhile, Edward was at Wellsworth Station picking up the children. However, during that time, two boys were playing hide-and-seek. Where are you? Oh no, gotta hide! Later, he noticed Edward at the station, and he saw his cab. The boy soon thought that this was a great hiding place, so he walked over to Edward's cab. When the boy climbed in Edward's cab, he accidentally hit Edward's regulator, and Edward had begun to move. The other boy didn't know that his friend was inside Edward's cab until it was too late! Oh no, wait! Edward's driver saw the other boy run after Edward, but then noticed Bertie at the donut shop across the street. Bertie! I need your help! Edward, slow down! Oh, hi, driver. Can't wait for the picnic tonight, right? No! One of the boys is in your cab! Wait, what? Uh, hi, Edward. Ah, kid, what have you done? So Edward, with the boy in his cab, still kept puffing along. But luckily, a nearby signalman saw Edward and diverted him into a nearby siding. Ouchie! Alright, everyone who's not hurt or seriously injured, on the bus! 
but you two boys are in so much trouble. Oh no. Uh oh. Meanwhile, James continued on his way to the school. He went at full speed and bumped up and down the line with his trucks. Whoa, James, will you please slow down? We're carrying fragile cargo here, and the children will be sad if they get destroyed. I will slow down once we get there. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? But what James didn't know was that he was on the wrong line, and James started heading away from the main line. The line burst for a broken track, which led to a large mud puddle. James's driver didn't see the puddle until it was too late! <laughs> Luckily, no one was hurt. But James was covered in mud. Two of his cars were on their sides, and the candy inside their crates were ruined. Just then, Stanley arrived. Hey James, there's someone here to see you. Please don't be Sir Topham Hat. But it was, and he was most annoyed. Yes, that's right James, you are in big trouble. Your driver told you to be careful, you are bumping too hard on the line, and now half of the candy is ruined thanks to you. Before Sir Topham Hat could finish, he heard two whistles. What was that sound? On the other track, Thomas and Percy arrived. They had just come back from delivering the tables and chairs. Ah, Thomas, Percy, so glad that you're here. I would like you to go back to the docks and get some more crates full of candy. All thanks to James. See, James, this is why you will never listen to anyone. Yeah, James, you really have a problem, dude. Look, I'm sorry, okay, but can you please help me get out of this mud puddle? Yes, James, but after you are repaired, you will do part of Thomas and Percy shunting for the rest of the week. No! You mad, bro? So Thomas and Percy took the rest of the unhurt cars of candy away. And then they arrived back at the docks to pick up more crates full of candy. And then they set off. At the school, some of the engines and children were waiting for James to arrive and the teachers and staff had already set up the tables and chairs and had hidden plenty of Easter eggs for the children. Oh, where is James? If he doesn't get here, then all the children will be upset. You know, I'm really starting to question why we even keep James. I mean, he's so boastful that he... Soon, Thomas and Percy arrived at the school. The children cheered with joy, and they even explained about James. Well, that explains about James. But where's that word? Um... Hello? Is anyone there? Driver? Are you ever coming back? No! Oh!